I keep hearing everybody's sick. So um, welcome. Welcome to this side of infection. And uh, and we always look forward to getting well again. I'm sure we all will. This is, I'm told, not a really serious kind of thing that's going around. It's a cough, you know. He has the doctor to give you something, and but he has to offer his good advice. You can't take antibiotics for a viral cough, right? But if you get something that's bacterial, then you have to take antibiotics. And they say the best antibiotic, you've heard this expression, is the sun. The best antibiotic is the sun. And in fact, it is very good. It's very good at disinfecting all kinds of things. The sun, the power of the sun, the earth, the, uh, is the energy source for the whole planet, for the earth. And so we rely on the sun and its energy, its light, for human flourishing. And in fact, sunlight is, is critical to human flourishing, to well-being. And many millions of people, I'm one of them, are not affected very well when the days get really, really short and there isn't so much sunshine. They call this nowadays seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. Uh, we used to just call it winter blues. The winter blues. And people feel it, you know, I feel it. Just, you know, there's no energy. Nothing feels right. So you, you get depressed. On top of that, there's Christmas and all of the holidays. When for one reason or another, a kind of toxic nostalgia sets in, where everything has to turn out right. The food has to turn out right. The liturgy has to turn out right. You have to buy the right gifts. The weather, everything's got to be right. And nothing ever is, of course. And so you get upset. That's strike two. Strike three. In almost every case, we are missing somebody. A parent, a spouse, a child, a good friend, a sister, a brother. Somebody who's been close to us, with whom we have celebrated Christmases for years and years and years, and they're just not there anymore with us, where we can feel them and talk to them. Day three. So, everybody want to go home now? Let's just go home. Because that's, so, and so all the literature, while, while we're all busy shopping, we read what's in the newspaper and in the magazines, and they all give us all kinds of advice on how to survive the holidays. Imagine that. The holidays are something we have to survive. <laughs> okay. I've given up complaining about the commercialization of Christmas. That's, that's, that ship has sailed. There's nothing we're going to be able to do about that. Our economy depends on Christmas in so many ways. But there is something about the way the world celebrates Christmas that is simply not healthy. For instance, at work and in all kinds of secular locations, everybody's busy having holiday parties up until Christmas when the tree gets thrown out the door the next day. And it's all over, and everybody comes to a crashing halt. Christmas is over. In the Byzantine Rite, of course, we have been fasting since November the 15th, or at least abstaining from certain kinds of foods so that we can really begin to celebrate the feast, as we do today, on December 25th, all the way through, at least, the Feast of the Theophany on January the 6th, where there's no fasting, and we continue to sing Christmas carols, and we continue to greet one another with Merry Christmas. Now, because of the three strikes business about Christmas and being sad in the first place, one of my favorite Christmas traditions used to be, always, watching a Charlie Brown Christmas from 1965. One of the oldest Christmas specials that's always been on. I finally, I haven't watched it in years, finally I managed to get the VCR, sorry, giving away my age. 
Finally, we got the, uh, the, uh, the DVR, that's what they call them, yeah, to uh, record uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas. And I remembered then when, why I liked it so much, because Charlie Brown said all the stuff I was feeling. He was depressed. <laughs> and he felt he could never do anything right, up to the point where he bought this miserable little tree that was half dead and falling apart. And everyone laughed at him, made fun of him for being such a jerk, for being so incompetent, for being no good. <coughs> and Charlie Brown, as a popular character of the uh, Peanuts series, probably because of that reason, that when he speaks, he says something that we all feel about ourselves. We all feel very small and inadequate and lots of times incompetent and incapable of doing anything right. And then it's Christmas when we have to do everything right, and it's just like we explode. We explode. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons and daughters. And if we are God's children, then we are also heirs of all that God is, of all that God has, and all that God does. Today, we celebrate the birth in the flesh of the one who came, the Word of God, the Word of God that tells us, you're all right, Charlie Brown. You're okay. You're good. I accept you. I love you. You don't have to do everything right. You don't have to do anything right. I'm going to do it all for you, just because I'm here. Just because I'm here. And that is the truth of the universe, whether it's recognized or not. The source of all that is, all that was, and all that will be, the one that brought all things out of nothingness into being and holds us into being, in being from moment to moment to moment says, you're okay, I love you, you don't have to be perfect. You don't. So, there are lots of folks nowadays among Christians. Lots of people who do not know because 83% or better of the world is not Christian. These are people who do not accept that good news. For one reason or another, their own religious tradition is different. They've never had the gospel preached to them. But for those who believe, sometimes we get a little bit carried away with this. Isn't this wonderful stuff? Aren't we wonderful? It, it kind of works like this. We get this toxic nostalgia about Christmas where everything has to be perfect because at one time it was perfect, remember? Do you remember getting up in the morning or whatever it was that you did in your homeland as a custom and it was Christmas and you got gifts and everybody was telling you, you felt like you were worth something because you got all of this good stuff. Somebody cared enough about you to give you this good stuff, right? But you know, parents are always in the background with the ulterior motive. They give you all this good stuff but then they put conditions on it. Are you on the naughty list or the nice list? I think it's, in Germany they have the custom of Krampus, I think. A demon that comes and tries to, the parents warn them that if they're not good, it's going to take them away. Just before Christmas. We tie this condition, be good and get presents, be bad and don't get presents, into the feast that's supposed to be all about free gift. So we end up, as adults, living with this conditional kind of love. And that's the kind of love we share with one another. If you behave the way I want you to, I will love you. That's the, con the conditioned love that we express to our children, that we teach them about and raise them in. Conditional kind of love that we feel toward ourselves. And you know when you feel this the most? when you really, really need something, when you're really praying for something, it almost comes out like you're making a deal. 
God, if you give this to me, if you do this for me, I'll be good, I promise. I'll be good, I promise. That's not what the child in the manger is telling us. The child in the manger is telling us that our Father loves us no matter what, but we have to look and find out for ourselves. We have to look in that manger to see where God is because that's where God put himself for us to see him when we can see him for the first time with our physical eyes. We have to go like the Magi got up and they saw something rising. They saw his star rising in the east. And they followed the star to the manger in Bethlehem where they saw what God was doing for humanity. In other words, while God's love is unconditional, we have to know it first of all. And then there is a moral component to this. Because God loves us un unconditionally, because we are heirs of all that God is, of his love, of his power, of his immortality, God calls us, invites us to a life of being like him. He invites us to give birth to Christ ourselves in our lives. And it is true, I think, that if the birth of Christ does not happen here, it doesn't happen anywhere. And because it's happened sort of out here, at the cultural level, with the whatever kind, at the religion level, and not enough in here, the world continues to writhe in agony. The world is still in pain. <coughs> What's God going to do about it? God has adopted you to do something about it. Through the birth of his son, you have become God's son and God's daughter. You in your place, in your time, wherever it is that you live, are God's mouthpiece to show and manifest by your life the love of God and to proclaim the glory of God and to say, like we say with the, with the tropa, with the troparian of the feast, and to recognize in you the sun that rises from on high. In a world that is so dark, it is only God's sunshine that will bring cleanliness and antiseptic quality to the lives of individuals and to the lives of the whole world. It's the sunlight of God that is the antibiotic and the only antibiotic to cure the world's ills. But we have to see that. Get up and go. Look for it. Look in the manger and allow the one who is in the manger to enter us. I ran into a poem. It's a simple poem, but I think it says pretty much everything that it just took me about 20 minutes to say. And just by way of conclusion, I wanted to share this poem with you. It's called The Miracle by Georg Johannes Gick. All the winds were mild. Mary came to me apart and laid the holy child here inside my heart. My heart was made the manger, and my body was the stall. And now no man is stranger. My life goes out to all to bring to each of them the child of heaven's light, to let them enter in like flames of candles to the holy night. <laughs> Relax. If the crown roast gets burned, or you didn't get the gift that you want, or somebody said something the wrong way and you turn into a big crank, or because we're family, right? This is what happens. God is with us. And because Christ is here in our hearts, even through the difficulties, no one is a stranger to us. No one. 
pure light of the divine knowledge enter into your hearts and into your homes this Christmas season. May he teach you and help you to live at peace with him who has accepted you and adopted you and with one another. And a Merry Christmas to all. <laughs>